So here we are on the show floor of Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona. And uh, as we've heard so many times already this week, uh, Open RAN is one of the hot topics here at the show this year. So I'm talking with Xilin Yi, who is a chief scientist from China Mobile and co-chair of the ORAN Technical Steering Committee at the ORAN Alliance. Uh, Xilin, thank you very much for taking time in your agenda to come and talk to us. Great to see you here today. Yes, it's great to be here, Ray. Thank you. So can you just tell us about the work of the ORAN Alliance Technical Steering Committee? Uh, you know, what is this doing on a you know, sort of day-to-day -day and ongoing basis? Well, the Technical Steering Committee of ORAN Alliance, of course, um, is in, in one sentence is responsible for delivering all the technical uh, activities, including the technical specs and the many other uh, supporting activities uh, to enable our ecosystem. Uh, in the technical uh, dimension. We are very lucky that uh, from our, uh, you probably heard from Alex, we have uh, like 32 operators that uh, serves more than 5 billion subscribers. And in addition, we have close to 300 other contributing members. And altogether, they brought us more than 4,200 very active global technical experts that are uh, diligently and very committed to all of our work. So currently, a uh, technical steering committee, um, first, our activity is open to all of the technical experts to participate. Um, but in terms of the uh, structure, we have right now uh, 11 working groups um, that covers respectively different aspects of our um, mission, uh, be it open, be it virtualization, intelligence, and uh, interoperability all of these different aspects for the necessary interfaces and the functions, and uh, also APIs, etc. And in many cases, even open reference designs. And then we also have uh, three focus groups, and the three focus groups uh, help us uh, uh, to deliver or help the ecosystem to deliver the, uh, our open source community activities where uh, it's, it's a, a forum that uh, we uh, also uh, develop kind of software open reference design for our technology and solutions. And then we also have a very important one, of course, the testing integration focus group that provides a platform both for our certification and the badging program, and also for our uh, global uh, PlugFest activity, as well as setting up uh, uh, open testing integration center across the globe. Uh, all of these are kind of infrastructure support for the ecosystem that uh, we feel that is very important that we need. And finally, we have a very important uh, third focus group. Uh, it's called the standard uh, development focus group, where actually it's the gateway that help all of our um, members uh, to interface and uh, liaison with various standard organization and uh, other relevant uh, industry alliances which has been very, very effective and very, very helpful. And uh, finally, we also have a research group, which is newly established just last year, which is started helping all of us to look at uh, beyond the current work, uh, looking towards 6G, what kind of preparation research work we should start thinking about. So um, with all of this, plus a few other subcommittees uh, in the TSC, we actually have um, a total of 92 members in this leadership structure in TSC. Wow. Yeah. So you, you mentioned the 11 technical work groups that are active right now. Uh, which ones are, would you say, are the, the most active and the ones that need the, the greatest attention for the ecosystem right now? Okay, yeah, for sure. I think that the answer is uh, not one, okay? But uh, aside from, I think, the uh, Open Front Hole Working Group, working before that I think a, a lot of us are very familiar with because that's yeah. the one that delivered our very first technical spec uh, actually about three years uh, ago. And then ever since then, all together, our work groups have delivered currently uh, more, close to 400 technical documents but amounts to 97 unique titles, technical specs, the current version, okay? So 97 different titles. And I think, um, I don't want to sound like I'm preferential, but uh, I believe um, in terms of our uh, old cloud 
that helps us to look at the necessary uh, DMS, IMS for cloudified uh, RAM platform, as well as the necessary accelerator, the AAL uh, activities, uh, right. abstraction layer. Uh, aside from that, I would like to draw the attention mostly to the intelligence part, okay? Because the intelligence part, uh, you can think of it as two plan in the management plan and in the control plan. And in the management plan in particular, the service management and orchestration, which actually cut across or in group one, two, and the 10 at least, and also six. And they kind of uh, are the uh, focal groups together that we are enable um, uh, the favorite term, the network automation or zero touch management uh, right. in the future. Um, and then attached from that is our near real time rig, real intelligent controller for the control plan, uh, bringing embedded AI and, uh, and uh, machine learning capability in. I think, uh, I believe following the open uh, part of the success, the intelligence part is where I would call it actually a crown jewel for everybody to look forward to. Now, uh, just at the moment, there's quite a lot of talk about, uh, about the, the front hall specifications and that focus of working group four. How are these developing? How close is the group to getting like real water type specifications out to market? Or is there a sense that it's already achieved that? Okay, that's an excellent question. Uh, I'm, I'm pondering about your word, uh, what, uh, water type. Uh, but I guess uh, it's a, a matter of maturity of, of uh, the spec, right? I would say that uh, since three years ago when Open Front Hall's version one uh, spec came out, uh, it has been continuously being upgraded and progressing with more and more comprehensive features and, and uh, capabilities and performance in improvement. Uh, right now we are up to ele version 11 already. Right. And then I think soon after you will see version 12 coming out. But in terms of maturity, I'm pretty confident to say that it's already up there because uh, one evidence uh, is that uh, uh, it's being adopted by Etsy last year as uh, uh, Etsy's past standard already. And then in addition, there are quite a few uh, vendors that are offering uh, commercialized uh, product using uh, uh, following these standards and even more so that uh, we see already uh, various operators have deployment using open front hall uh, interfaces in their fields. I would say that uh, it's mature enough to be commercialized to be deployed in scale and also the availability of products is there but of course as with all of our work we always continue enhance improve sure. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, you'll see that uh, there are a few new new capability features that uh, Working Group 4 is working on to enhance open front hall, including energy saving capability, including the uplink uh, 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 KPI improvement, and also some of the special uh, tailor-made uh, uh, needs to address the IoT uh, opportunities as well. Now, uh the open testing and integration centers, the OTICs, um, look like they're playing an increasingly important role in the Alliance's work. How do these facilities fit into the bigger picture of what's going on at the Alliance right now? Oh, wow. Well, that is really very fundamental aspect of our work because as everybody say that uh, uh, desegregation is where we started in the open run, right? then you have to re-aggregate it together, right? And we have vendor diversity, so it's not like a vertically integrated solution that traditionally we get in our industry. Now we can have several different um, vendors that uh, uh, mix and match their hardware and software together to form a system. So the integration testing is, is super, super important. So from day one, we recognize that, and then open, uh, 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 open testing and integration center, the OTIC, is exactly to serve that purpose. Uh, it is to provide kind of uh, vendor neutral, open, transparent, robust environment where it enable anybody in our ecosystem that has a new piece of hardware or new piece of software to come in and plug into a supporting infrastructure environment to try it out. 
and, or, or you can have a few partners coming together with your combination to try it out, to get tested. And then we actually, um, we, so far, uh, Orion Lens has approved a total of 11 OTICs globally, uh, where four are in Europe and two in North America, five are in Asia right now. And there are quite a few uh, that are still in the application process. Okay. And this, um, uh, these OTICs are uh, authorized by Orion Alliance to award conformance uh, testing certificate and uh, interoperability testing badge, as well as some end-to-end -end subsystem uh, testing badge to help uh, build trust and promote the product in, in the ecosystem. What do you think the working groups can achieve in 2023 that will kind of move the needle in this market and, and help to make a big difference in the acceleration of adoption of Open RAN? It's a, I don't want to say it's a tough question, uh, but uh, really uh, we've been um, discussing internally among all of our technical experts and the leaders. We feel that uh, 2023 is a crucial year in the sense that if you look at the technology adoption curve, we believe we are somewhere in the second part. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we need to find a, a way to, uh, to get the energy and the paths to smoothly transition into the third part of the adoption curve in a healthy manner. So actually, uh, we did, it's not an um, externally announced initiative, but internally for our TSC community, we have been working on an internal initiative we codename uh, ORAN 2.0, but it's not really at the board level yet, it's just at the TSC level. And in that, um, we had all of our working groups and the focus group co-chairs together to jointly have a healthy reflection as to what I've done right, and uh, what is missing, what is the biggest challenge, and what would be uh, the priority action steps, one, two, three, that we should try to plan on uh, undertaking in the coming year. And jointly, I think we have a few uh, ideas. Uh, uh, I think uh, aside from this year will be uh, definitely the first year our research group will deliver some white paper and the technical uh, reports. Um, I think more importantly, we are looking at, um, um, uh, because of the agility, flexibility, and the easy to customize uh, nature of our uh, technology solutions, we are trying to uh, engage the vertical industry's uh, uh, needs uh, right. more, more actively, and where we already have a few action items planned out. And then we are also, um, in terms of the, the, the testing and the integration, as well as the global process, we would like to have a more focused theme in terms of, especially for example, around the, our feature packages that I'm not sure if you're familiar with, which is, as I always say, when people ask you, when will you have ORAN solution? I said, you have to define ORAN solution because ORAN is such a multifaceted wide scope, right? Yeah. There are different subsets at different time of the capability that would bring you some value proposition that uh, either um, operators would like to see prioritized or some maybe vertical markets would make use of it. So for that, we have this feature packages work, which is clusters of uh, related specs that would be delivered by a subset of our working groups. Together, they could give you capabilities such as uh, maximum optimization, uh, rent slice uh, uh, ins uh, SLA insurance, okay. and mobility management, interference management, load balancing, and you name it. And also uh, a very special thing, uh, which is what we call RAN analytic information exposure, which is actually not only we enable our network with AI and machine learning capability, but also we um, expose what we could learn from the AI machine learning processing to external functionalities okay. so that we can actually not only build in intelligent function in RAN that is uh, provided by vendor or provided by operators in-house development team, but also from any third-party developers. So this part, I think, will be um, really, uh, you will see uh, that become more a realistic offering in 2023. Okay. And this would be useful not only for operator, but also for vertical and also for 
uh, many of the new ecosystem players, I think this, okay. this will be have it. Oh, finally, another thing I should not miss to say is that uh, uh, in terms of our uh, engagement with uh, uh, SDOs and uh, industry alliances, uh, we feel that uh, we have been doing uh, pretty well with uh, uh, many uh, in different geographic areas. Uh, one thing you know that Etsy has adopted uh, uh, our uh, spec and actually this year we are seeing maybe around 20 more that are on that track okay. that's going into Etsy. And also it, this is not necessarily official yet but uh, Etsy just established the MOU arrangement with us and the next step could be similar adoption for, for them. Okay. But we are looking at uh, actually for 2023 to kind of uh, uh, bring to a next level uh, in terms of our engagement with 3GPP. Because uh, you know that 3GPP is still the center and the most important SDO for our industry in general. And uh, we would like to be able to um, have really a very well aligned uh, effort going forward, especially for some of the value from our already accomplished technical work. Uh, we would like to see if uh, 3GPP would be interested in adopting some of that uh, with the help of uh, all of the, the players in our ecosystem. So I think 2023 will be a very exciting year, very challenging, but very exciting year. We have a lot to do. Okay, absolutely. Well, it sounds like there's a, an awful lot going on at the ORL. So look forward to catching up in the future and finding out how all of these things are progressing for the ecosystem. Shilin, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.